Hello you lot, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going to show you how to make an all-time British classic and one of my absolute favourite things to eat. I'm going to make steak and ale pie. Before we start, a shout out to my new Patreon fan, Steve Witcher, and also a shout out to somebody who's just upgraded their pledge, Katrina Sotomayor. Gracias. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you. So I did this five years ago and I'm gradually in the process of remaking all of those old videos from that time because, uh, well, I'm just not happy with them. Right, if you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, become a patron, make a donation, all of that great stuff. And without further ado, let's make a marvellous pie. I'm going to make the filling first because that takes a long time. So I've got 750 grams of shin beef, I've got two medium onions, I've got half a litre of beer and a couple of bay leaves, a teaspoon each of parsley and thyme. Um, we might need some stock, we might need some salt and pepper, we'll see how we go. So the meat, shin beef is generally reckoned to be the best, followed by skirt. These are cuts that, that are they're quite cheap, they're quite tough so they need a good long cooking time to break down the collagen which is these, these lines. So I need to trim this of uh, excess fat, not all of it but you know a big kind of solid lump like that, don't need that much. And cut it into s slightly smaller than bite size pieces. I always say this, you don't want one inch cubes of beef sticking up through your pastry. The beer, I wouldn't say there's any particular recommendation. Um, it could be anything from a stout like Guinness, which is very dark and bitter, up through, um, you know, a regular British bitter ale or uh, an IPA, uh, India Pale Ale. This is Old Empire IPA by Marsden's and you can get that in most British supermarkets. And it's actually one of my favourite beers, I love it. So that's what I'm using. Don't worry if all you can get wherever you are is like Guinness, that, that'll be fine. My only caveat would be don't use a lager, a very pale beer, not much flavour, not much point. Now I'm going to toss the beef in some flour, just, just plain all-purpose flour, get that nicely coated. This will help it go brown and develop the lovely Maillard reaction that we all love so much. And it'll also help the gravy thicken up a bit later on. Now we want to heat plenty of oil in a large frying pan or sauté pan. Actually not oil, um, beef dripping. I've got tons of beef dripping so I might as well use that. And I'm going to need to do this in two batches so that you know I've got room to stir it around, whiz it around and get it browned. Hey, poetry! I'll pretend the beef is still sautéing while I chop up my onion. Quite small bits, like that. So I've got the pan that I did the beef in, and if you've got any fat, juice, yumminess, keep that in the pan and add more dripping or oil if you need to. Add the onion and just, uh, I'll cook that for five, ten minutes. You, want, you can let it get a bit brown if you like. Now we need to cook the beef and everything else. And you've got three options. I mentioned before it takes very long time to get this nice and tender the way we want it. So conventionally in a, a big pot on the stove top that would take about four hours of just gently simmering with the lid on. In a slow cooker or crock pot it would take 10 to 12 hours, maybe longer. In a pressure cooker it'll take 30, 40 minutes. <laughs> and that's my choice because, you know, short of time. As always, so I'm going to pop all the beef in there and the beer, all of it. Anyway, I'm going to add some stock, so uh, cheat stock using a cube. So about half a litre of boiling water. Uh, good old cook's friend. You won't believe how many people slag me off for using these, but uh, you know, everybody does, including top chefs at home. I'm going to bring this to the boil and if any scum comes off, I'm going to skim it off. Skim off the scum. Oh yes. Okay, that's boiling now. 
there's not actually any scum. There is some foam from the beer. If uh, if I'd been fortunate enough to have bones in my shin of beef, there would there would probably have been some scum. Yeah, if if your butcher does let you have the bones, take them and use them. Put them in with uh, the stew. So I can have the onions. And the herbs and bay leaves. I know bay leaves are herbs. Whew. And then we'll slap the lid on. And wait for that to come up to pressure and then give it, I'll give it 40 minutes. Now I'm gonna make my pastry and as you know, there's, there's lots of different kinds. And as you might also know, I'm not keen on puff or flaky pastry. I do it sometimes, but really for a pie, I, I like a, a short crust or hot water pastry, which is what is always used for pork pies, but not so much for savoury pies like this. Although I, I think it's actually the best thing because it's robust, it's flavoursome, it, you know, it holds itself together. And um, it's actually the easiest pastry to make on the planet. Honestly, so we have 450 grams of plain all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of salt, 225 grams of beef dripping or, or lard, pork lard, and 225 grams of water. Right, I need to put my dripping, which I've chopped into bits, so it melts more easily, in the pan with the water and I'll just heat that up so the fat melts, but we don't want it to boil. While that's happening, I'll just add the salt to the flour, and mix that in. So the um, dripping has all melted into the water, and we'll just add about half of it to the flour, and mix that in. When that's fully incorporated, we'll add the rest of the liquid. Okay, there it is. A uh, nice big ball of total pastry. Now, you want to cover that and cool it down. So, I'm going to and I'm going to slap this in the fridge for about half an hour. And my filling should be ready in about five minutes. Okay, so uh, I've released the pressure under cold water, and let's have a look. Yum. We've got a lovely, rich-looking beef stew. And we've got a bay leaf. There'll be another one in there somewhere. <laughs> you, want, you want to dig them out if you can. Found it. <laughs> Right, let's try and get a chunk of meat and taste it. That is delicious. It does need a bit of salt and a bit of black pepper. And I'm just going to pop this into a plastic container. Uh, there's quite a bit more, so actually two plastic containers. And we pop those in the fridge to cool down completely. Because if you put a hot filling in your pie, you're guaranteed to get a soggy bottom. Now it's time to assemble the pie. So here's my pastry. And I'm pretty sure I've got a lot more here than I will need. But um, always best to have too much than not enough. So just grab some of it. And we want some pastry on the worktop. And on the pastry. Unroll this out into a, a thin disc, which will be the top of the pie. And it should be uh, about a quarter of an inch, uh, five or six millimeters thick. We'll pop the tin on there and trim around the edge. Uh, 
and set that aside until we need it. Now we do the bottom, we'll reuse those bits. Okay, so that's uh, that's the bottom. So we'll load the flour there and we'll just tip it into the tin and press it down. If you have uh, long nails, just grab a bit of spare dough and push it in. I'll leave that overhang on there for now while I put the filling in. All right, there we go. Just. Uh, Fill it in. <laughs> it's going to be fabulous and bonus, there's going to be enough pastry and filling to do a couple of individual pies. Norma. So, I uh, just wet the edge with some water, pop the top on. trim off the excess pastry and I'm just going to use a fork to crimp around the edge. Now I'm just going to pop this in the fridge for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to uh, just to chill, to rest and um, while that's resting I'll make some decoration, some little leaves and things. There's my big pie decorated beautifully with leaves and berries and uh, a snake and uh, two smaller ones so that's marvellous and I've got egg wash this is a beaten egg with a splash of milk and I'm just going to paint these all over and I've actually given up piercing the tops of pies to let the steam out because it makes no difference whatsoever as far as I can tell you want your oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius if it's a fan oven a convection oven that's 200 for a conventional one, and that's gas at 6. Alright, and these go in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes, and I will check them, well, I'll turn them around halfway through, probably. Okay, time's up, I've had a look, it looks great. Oh. Ooh, yeah, baby, look at that. Ah, oh, wow. And now it's taste test time with Mrs. Keith Cool. She's just come in from the living room and he's hungry. Food. Hey, this looks good. Yeah. He's oh. I tell you what, I am absolutely loving new potatoes this year. Do they count as new still in June? Um. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, that's what Maurice call them. Mhm. 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 Yeah. Mhm. Okay, steak and nail pie. Mm -hmm. Oh, was this in your new um, soggy bottom proof pie dish? Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you were making steak and nail pud. Pie. Oh, got that wrong. <laughs> okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, I don't think a soggy bottom in a savoury meaty pie is a bad thing because it's got soggy, well it's... It's absorbed it could the be. juices, hasn't it's, it? It could be soggy because it's not cooked properly, mm -hmm. which is a bad thing. Or it's soggy because it's absorbed. Mm -hmm. greve, mm -hmm. which is an excellent thing, so... Uh, I'm eating that bit there, so just juice. Oh, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> all right. So, yeah, well up to your usual standard. I do like the leaves and things on the top. Oh, thank you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I am hungry and that, it looks beautiful. Can you guys see this? I expect you can. Big lumps of meat and all cooked down. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. So unctuous and you want um, your dinner, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I wish to be left alone with my husband and his pie. <laughs> I'm busy. Do you know how good it has smelt through there all afternoon? <laughs> okay, thank you for watching. And what are you doing? Here's my hand. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> See you next time. Mm -hmm.